this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about Bifrost and Bifrost Fluids that is available to you in Autodesk Maya. Uh, for this version, I am going to be using Maya 2023. And a couple of things to point out first off. Uh, number one, Bifrost can be found either going across the top here on your tabs, you should have a Bifrost tab, or on your drop down menu. Remember, you can switch into FX, and you can also see the drop down here. Now, one nice thing about Bifrost, like its counterparts, you do have some examples already pre-made for you that if you want to explore and go more in depth with Bifrost. However, to start out with, we're just going to make a basic shape and have it uh, send off some liquid here. One more thing I'm going to change to, Bifrost can be pretty taxing on a system. So what I'm actually going to do is come down here because it deals with animation. I'm going to come down to the timeline and I'm going to shave this down from 1875 to something like 200 here. Just nice kind of tight area there and then 200. All right, good stuff. Now I'm also going to try to keep this a little bit smaller here just so that I'm not completely pushing my computer system here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a surface that I want the water to actually fall off of. So normally you start with some sort of polygon. A lot of folks, we like to start with the sphere. So I am going to name this, I'm actually going to change its name from sphere in my outliner. And what I'll call this is uh, emitter for the fluid. Now another thing that I'm going to do here is I am going to pull this up a little bit. And now I'm ready to come to the Bifrost fluids. You can either use your tab here at the top or go under Bifrost, so long as you have the shape that you want to act as an emitter selected. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose liquid. Now what you're going to see is immediately you are going to get a ton of items that appear over in your outliner. Likewise as well, you're going to get a lot of liquid points and liquid tabs in your attribute editor that you can work with. So now, if I just go ahead here and preview this, it's a little hard to see, but you can see the speckles of the water falling down in the shape of the sphere. Now, one thing I'd like to add to this here, just to take you through the process, I'd like to talk about the renderers when it comes to working with Bifrost. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with the Maya software. And what we're going to do real quick here is I'm going to play so that I get some of the liquid showing. So maybe about right there. And I'm going to go ahead and do a quick render here. As you can see, we don't see anything there. That's because whenever you're working with Bifrost, it prefers to work with the Arnold renderer. Even if I switch to hardware 2.0, you can see the speckles appearing, but it is nowhere near that photorealism that you can get whenever you're working in Arnold. Now, before I dive into Arnold, though, one thing that I want to do is remember, you're going to want some sort of light source. So we're just going to go ahead and create a sky dome light just so we can see what we're doing here. So I'm going to go ahead here. We're going to switch on the renderer and we're going to hop over into Arnold now. So now if I go ahead and use the IPR there, it's a little hard to see against the light there, but you can see how I have this little drop of water kind of mimicking the sphere here that it's coming off of. So now if I go ahead and keep playing, you can see how the water kind of keeps playing through that slot there. So I'll stop it for a second and rewind. And I'm actually going to stop the IPR for a second so we can talk a little bit more as far as what we're working with. So first off here, your emitter, you're really not too concerned about doing anything with that. In fact, we can kind of talk about here, for instance, if I hit the H to hide, you can see how it will still emit the actual Bifrost particles for you. So you can actually turn this off and just leave it alone. 
Now we get into the Bifrost itself. You have a lot of options as far as whenever you're working with the liquid itself, the liquid shapes, and some of the properties as well. One of the first things to point out here is just to share a little bit as far as the liquid shape is concerned. I don't want to take this too far up here, but you do have as far as types, you can change from type to sphere. So there you can see it a little bit better whenever you're previewing. You can also change your max particle display count in the radius of the sphere itself. So now, for instance, if I zoom in a little bit and let's bring back up as far as the IPR is concerned, and I hit play again, you can see my water falling through the air there. The only reason I would suggest maybe switching to spheres when you're working with the liquid shape is just it's easier to see whenever you're working in Maya. If it's truly making uh, an issue for you, you can go back to the points and you can work a little bit better that way if you so choose. You can also see as far as sphere radius, so if you want to have something that looks a little more solid, you can, but likewise again, if it's giving you super problems, you can switch back to points or, you know, a lot of folks like the sphere from the standpoint that you can actually see it. Now also too, uh, some other things to point out is you do have the Bifrost liquid itself as far as your transform attributes, but also coming back into liquid here, I do want to talk a little bit about as far as the container itself, more specifically as far as the solver properties. If you notice right now, you have the gravity magnitude of 9.80 and also your gravity's direction. If you really wanted to, you can change these values around and instead, for instance here, you can see how the water actually goes upward instead. If I actually come in and preview this, we should actually see a so it's a little far away there, but you can see it. It's kind of just going upward now. So I have an upward droplet. Fun fact, uh, if you decide to actually continue with the Bifrost, believe it or not, when you work with arrow, which is your air elements, yes, they go upward. So I'm going to go ahead and change this back to negative one. So at this point now, you've kind of set up some water here. Uh, you can also change as far as, if I recall, here we go. Because it's attached to an AI standard surface, you can also change as far as specular if you want, sheen, the coating, you know, you can make this whatever color you feel like it as far as changing the overall surface of the liquid. However, for this demo, I'm just going to leave this as is for right now because I also want to get in on this video just showing you uh, that you can actually have some collision going on. To this point, uh, you know, we just have the water. It's coming off of the sphere and it's just falling, you know, endlessly. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is we are going to make a quick poly model. I'm going to grab another, make a quick little square here. What I'm going to do is kind of flatten that and just so that it has something to hit here. And I will go ahead and we will assign a new material and let's do a blind. And let's do kind of a dark red there. There we go. Just so that I can kind of see what we're doing. So let's go ahead. Let's jump back into the IPR and we'll hit play. So there you can see that nice reflection, but as you can see, whoop, goes right through your square there. So what we're gonna wanna do is we are gonna wanna come under the Bifrost fluid and almost similar to uh, its end counterparts here as far as like end cloth and particle and hair, etc. You're going to wanna come over to Bifrost now, the next thing you're going to want to do is create a collider. 
again, even in the preview, there goes my liquid there. Colliders are kind of similar to things like the end cloth where you're going to choose your object, in this case, the Bifrost liquid. And then I'm going to control click what I want to be the collider. So this is going to make a connection between the liquid itself and the cube so that when the liquid collides with the cube, it's going to splash everywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Bifrost, choose Collider. And you can see now right below cube, it makes a collider props. And now if I test even just in my scene here, there you can see my liquid and you can now see the liquid kind of spreading all over there as far as the object goes. And so far, in fact, you can actually see it kind of gliding off the edge there. So let's go ahead and we will test this as far as IPR is concerned. And let's take a look at what we see. So there's my water. It's coming on down very slowly. And there you can kind of see it splashes across the top there and dissipates along the edge there. Now this would be where, as far as things like the liquid is concerned, that we would want to come in and start to work with overall the liquid itself but also the liquid shape as far as the max particles uh, also as well. Uh, you may actually want to now finally come in and start working with uh, the gravity. Uh, you might also want to start working with the actual color of what you're seeing there. But now you have the basics of just getting a set of liquid going on and then working with Bifrost. The last thing to point out about Bifrost is it's actually pretty in-depth overall. You have a lot of things that can get done. More specifically, it does have a graph element to it that there's plenty of information out there both as far as the Maya Knowledge Network, but you can actually utilize graph layouts for creating Bifrost effects. So for those of you that may be familiar with things like um, uh, the Niagara and Unreal and stuff like that, this might look really, really familiar to you as far as setting up and utilizing kind of a grid-esque layout. So hopefully this gives folks some ideas as far as getting started with Bifrost. And from there, you know, again, you want to use the Arnold renderer, but you can get a lot of cool effects going on and some very realistic looking liquids.